As a young girl growing up in the Philippines, no one could have guessed what life would have in store for Lloyda Lewis, not even Lewis herself. She's now a celebrated philanthropist who shattered glass ceilings in the legal world and became the CEO of a billion-dollar company, all while dealing with devastating loss. It's a journey detailed in her new book, Why Should Guys Have All the Fun? So is this the pink room? We call it the Picasso room. The Picasso, because the this Picasso. Is, this is his favorite because he won it at an auction. Uh -huh. Lloyda Lewis's art collection was her husband's pride and joy, one the late Reginald Lewis acquired, much like everything else. It's the tenacity of Mr. Lewis. Five years he <laughs> went and visited Romar Burden's widow, and four times he, she said no. She knew he will not stop. Many of his keepsakes are now enshrined. So what's in here? Things that he loved, Monte Cristo cigar. Reminders of their 24-year marriage, three decades after his death. I'm curious to know what if you hadn't met Reginald Lewis, where you might be today? Well, probably a senator. Or even a concert pianist. One thing's for certain, she was no trophy wife, even for the first black American to build a billion dollar business. What is this room? This is the blue room, which is really room for memorabilia. The seemingly demure widow has candidly spilled the tea and why should guys have all the fun? After 30 years, I said, I think especially women should know that we are capable. We are not men, but we are capable. Anything he can do, we can do not better, but differently. It nods to her husband's memoir, Why Should White Guys Have All the Fun, a book she inspired after penning her own books first. If it sounds like she's a bit of an overachiever, thank her parents. She graduated the top of her law school class in the Philippines, acing her bar exam. She was gifted a trip around the world from her dad, but fell in love with New York City while visiting her sister. And after finding a job, found her role as a matchmaker. Who thinks of introducing their sister to their boss? Of course. I mean, for me, it's very natural, <laughs> you know? My sister... That's not natural, Lloyd. <laughs> no, but my sister has always been uh, prettier than I am, and my boss was fast. They were going out on a date that weekend. So for Friday, he asked me, Loida, why don't I fix a double date? You know, I've never been on a blind date. So that was a new adventure. I said, sure. Six months later, she proposed to that said date. Then you kind of reneged on the proposal. Yes, yes. Why? Yes. Being married to an American living in the United States means I will leave my country. I will leave my ambition. I will leave my parents. He was brokenhearted. What changed your mind? I was so, so sad. Having graduated from College of Law, University of the Philippines, I was with the best of the best. And, you know, I knew that Reginald Lewis is different from all of them. He was masterful. By 1987, the corporate attorney turned his sights to business and leveraged a buyout of an international food company worth $985 million. He renamed it TLC Beatrice International Holdings, Inc. Later that year, it nearly doubled its revenue, becoming the first black-owned company to have more than a billion dollars in annual sales. He became a billionaire before the age of 50. I would say that it was his inner desire to prove white people wrong, that a black man can reach the height that any white man can do. While he ran the world, she practiced immigration law, all the while raising two daughters. But in 1992, Reginald Lewis was diagnosed with terminal brain cancer. I was out of sorts. I was totally discombobulated. Anytime I hear about a song or I just remember him, I would just cry, bowl. And then after six months, around December, I started to think now, what do I have here? My two girls. I will be mother and father to them. So that's one. Number two, the book, it had to be finished. And then the third one is the company. A company on the edge of bankruptcy during the 1993 recession. And after a year-long search, no successor. So Loida 
took the reins. I'm sure there were detractors. There were people who said, what is she thinking she can do taking over this business? No. Yes. She... No? I didn't listen. Besides, I came from a very entrepreneurial family. And then, 24 years being married to Reginald Dewis, I was an active listener. And I'm a lawyer. I'm not intimidated by documents. I never heard any negative word. And from my board of directors, if they didn't want me, I can dismiss them because we own 51%. You're like, I got all the cards. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> she raised $2.2 billion in revenue before selling the company. These days, Lewis is building a legacy, a Baltimore museum that bears her husband's name. This museum is a celebration of excellence, and it's a celebration of a family who epitomizes what excellence looks like. Maryland Governor Wes Moore believes it will inspire the next generation, not just in business, but the partnerships that build lives. She's found a way of being able to look at everything that life gives her as not an, an, an obstacle, but an opportunity. At 81, Lloyda Lewis remains full of life, yet she's still a woman very much in love. It's hard. <laughs> Sorry. No. Yeah, it's hard. Even now, it's hard. 30 Even years now, later. 30 years later, yeah. Still have my, <laughs> my wedding ring. Not available. <laughs> he was your soulmate. Yeah, yeah, no, no, he's, he could have done so many more things. Yes, he was, he was special. Wow, and she still believes there's more that she needs to do to increase people's knowledge of who this man was and yeah. what he did. If you recall, TLC Beatrice was the maker of Equal, and Equal oh, yeah. sort of like changed the landscape of artificial sweeteners mm -hmm. from Sweet and Low, then there was Equal, and then Splenda, and ice cream, and all sorts of other things. He really put it on the map. I feel like I almost learned something about him just by seeing the woman he spent his life with. The confidence, you know, there were doubters. Well, I, I don't know. I didn't listen to them. <laughs> right. She's a force. She is. she is a force. 